Stephanie. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my channel. Please hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell so you'll be notified when I do another video. Today I want to talk about sewing. You know, my mom said something on the phone the other day. Uh, no, we were texting. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> My mom said something the other day that just kind of struck me. She said, you know, I don't have any sewing buddies. I don't think that's true. I think she does have sewing buddies. We don't live close and it would be fun to have a sewing buddy. So I started to think, I wish I had a sewing buddy. And I kind of feel like this channel is sewing buddies because sometimes you find me for a sewing craft or a sewing project that I did and you are also a sewing person so we are sewing buddies and the reason I say that is because I am not an expert by any means there's so much I need to know and need to learn but I do feel competent enough to share my projects so that's kind of fun like I would share with a friend like you're my friend you're my sewing buddy there you go and so I wanted to tell you why I sew and it all starts with, I was raised in a sewing household. My mom was a sewer, so I watched her sew. She made, like one Christmas, she made all Barbie clothes for my Barbie. Like she sewed them back in the 60s. So that was crazy. I loved it, man. I was such a Barbie girl. I loved Barbie. And I remember once my sister was going on a backpacking trip, my mom made her down sleeping bag. I think I, I think it was, she bit off more than she could chew because we had like down feathers in the whole house forever. Because it just, it was just, oh, but I loved her adventure spirit. And I think she felt like she could make anything. She made our clothes and she made clothes for herself. And I always wanted to just make something out of nothing. So it was always there. I just, you know, I had some basics. She let me use her machine when I was young. And I do remember, I have to tell you, I made this pair of pants. I was probably in junior high school and I didn't ask how. I just decided I was gonna make a pair of pants. So I got some fabric. I don't know how I got the fabric, but I had some fabric and I, I laid down on it <laughs> and I marked where my legs were. <laughs> and then I just sewed it up and you know kind of made it match some pants I had I don't know but I made it up like I didn't know how to create a garment I just thought you could just kind of draw it I did it for my dolls draw it on a piece of fabric and cut it out and sew it up the sides <laughs> I don't know if those turned out I think I wore them like I think they kind of turned out lame but I just always wanted to sew and then you know life kind of takes over you know I got older I, I had kids I didn't have time for all that let me just say if you've got kids I get it you don't have time for all that you have to bring everything out put everything away <sighs> no that wasn't fun so throughout my mommy years I would say my sewing was more like emergency like I needed to make something and one of my favorites I'm going to tell you was a cute story my daughter we were in the store and she was probably third grade maybe second grade really little and she wanted to be I dream a genie a genie not I dream a genie she was that was like way before their time just a genie she wanted to be a genie so there was this genie costume in the store and she wanted to buy it and I it would look like crap it was crap and I said no you're not gonna buy that you're gonna be something else for Halloween that's that's not a good costume too much money for what it was blah 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 she begged she begged she begged I said if you buy this costume you have to wear it that's your costume. And she's like, oh, wear it, it's mine. So I bought it, she gets home, we open the package, she puts it on and she's just like, it's bad. I knew it was bad, I told her it was bad. And I said, you have to wear it, you have to. And she was, she was stoic, like she was trying to, you know, say it's fine, it'll be fine, but it wasn't fine. And I remember we were sitting in the living room and I had kind of decided on the sly I would make her a costume, but I wasn't gonna tell her. I wanted her to eat this, like I wanted her to suffer. <laughs> Because she was always doing this, begging for stuff. So I asked her, I said, well, if you could be anything you wanted to be for Halloween, what would you be? And she said, a princess. So when she was sleeping, I made her a princess dress. And I didn't know what I was doing. Like, this was a combination of, like, three different patterns. I put a sleeve from this and a th uh, made her this pink princess dress. I remember fully measuring her when she was asleep in bed. <laughs> so I made this dress without her knowing. And she gets to... Halloween, she gets up, like the costume, she's gonna wear it, and she wants to cry. She wants to cry, but she can't, because she made this happen. She's gotta, you know, she made her bed, she has to lay in it, right? So I said, why don't you close your eyes and just wish, you know, see what happens. So she closed her eyes, and I laid the princess dress in her, in her arms, and she opens it, and she's like so happy. And she said, Mommy, this is the dress I've been dreaming. I'll never forget that moment. 
all because of sewing. So I have very happy, happy memories. My kids grew up and moved away and I had like room and time and more, a little more money and I started to sew more more like for myself and I had dedicated a space for it I had this big closet that I wasn't using for anything else it became my little tiny sewing room and uh, I just loved that I I had this old sewing machine forever I got it when we were first married and I just was we were just broke like I don't know are people broke when they first get married anymore because it just seemed like everybody I knew went through that early marriage period so I didn't have a sewing machine nothing at all and I wanted one so bad and uh, I had a toddler and um, you know like a four-year-old and I saw this Singer sewing machine in the paper for a price I could afford it was probably 50 bucks And I thought I could afford that I could afford that but I don't have a car I didn't have a car so I called the lady and I said I really want to buy your sewing machine But I can't come look at it until I can get you know my husband to let me use the car And she said you know what where do you live and I told her she said I'll bring it over what? So she did. This lady out of the paper brought the sewing machine into my kitchen sat down showed me how it worked gave her the money how cool is that? I used that sewing machine for the whole time my kids were growing up. And when I got, when they moved away and I started to sew more often, I, I got another machine that was a little bit newer, a little bit better, had a little more stuff to do. And so I gave my daughter the Singer, which actually turns out to be valuable. It's a featherweight and I should have kept it, but she needed a sewing machine. I wasn't using it. I gave it to her. And when I brought it to her, I brought it to her. <laughs> to show her how to work it. Open the lid and inside was a little picture of her when she was like the age of that princess dress. How cute is that? It was almost like, what was that picture doing in there? It was like that sewing machine was meant to be hers. So sewing has been intertwined in my life. When my granddaughters had their first communion, I made their dresses and I made things like beyond my skill level and I took the extra time to make them as perfect as I could. My goal was to make them look as beautiful on the inside as they were on the outside so that they could be an heirloom dress. I made their costumes. I mean, I just, oh, I just loved it. And I have to say, I want to tell you reasons to sew. My reasons. Get what you want. The color, the fabric, the look, the style. It's almost like you're your own fashion designer. You get to pick exactly what you want. All of it. It's not like settling at all. You get exactly what you want. And you get to have things that fit you. And um, it's, you're just your own unique person. How can one size fit all? It doesn't, really, you know? You get to have this joy of creating, which is so rewarding. It's almost like therapy for me. I just get lost in the world of sewing when I'm making something. I just love it. It's so much fun. And I love textiles. I love the feel of fabric. I, uh, fabric is everything. When I'm shopping, I just take my hand down the row and if I don't feel something soft and lovely, I don't want to try it. It's got to feel great. I love soft, beautiful fabric. Um, but it's not to save money or time because you're not going to do either one of those with sewing. I learned that. Um, I watched a sewing show and I learned that from the sewing teacher. She was on like a DIY TV show a while back. I don't know how long ago. Her name is Susan Calgie and I looked her up before I did this video to see if she's still out there. She's got a website and all kinds of little like classes she does and I learned from her TV show some amazing things. I learned basically that there's a whole world out there of how to do things right. And she used to drill in. You don't sew to save money or to be cheap. You sew to have perfection. She used to make wedding gowns and couture. And I just was it just intrigued by everything she did. And I tried to learn as much as I could from that. And oh my gosh, it just opened the door and made me want more, 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 more. I also, when I started to make more garments, things just weren't fitting. And um, I found this dress form on online that you could make yourself. Like I had been looking for dress forms and I'd seen this like duct tape one and I was really close to doing it, but I just didn't like the idea of putting tape around my body. Even though you're gonna have like this t-shirt on it, just like, and it was not pretty. 
this duct tape thing was not pretty. I want it pretty. And I found this dress form and it has been such a joy. I made a video about it and oh my gosh, so many people made this dress form. It's just so cool. And I'll show you a picture of it. And it's, it's actually right there. It's always in all my videos wearing a dress, but that's my dress form and that's my body. That dress fits me and it fits my dress form is perfect. And, um, you know, I'm self-taught. I really just learn from everywhere. I learn from patterns. I learned from books. I learned from TV. I took this sewing class a couple years ago. I learned a wealth of information from that. That was probably the most giant leap I took in just kind of realizing some of the some of the self-taught mistakes I was making. I wasn't doing things right. And I'll tell you two that I learned right away. One is I wasn't um, cutting my patterns perfectly. I just was just cutting them out. I didn't think it mattered. Well, you know, just the slightest variation, if you look at the pattern, one size is not that big a difference in the lines. So if I'm cutting crooked and I'm cutting sloppy, I'm changing the size of that pattern. So I learned that I should not be sloppy. <laughs> it just makes a difference. So I'm way more careful when I cut. And also, you know, they have the line for the grain. I just thought that was a suggestion. <laughs> I didn't think it was like, it mattered. It was just, it was sort of that way, that would be fine, but in class we were taught to use a ruler to make sure that that matches the grain perfect, perfectly and it makes the dress lay a certain way. So those two things were, it's basically just follow the instructions and stop making it my own. Um, I do, I do love crafts of all kinds, all kinds. I can, I can knit barely and I can crochet barely. I'm not really great at either one. I can do jewelry making. I have tons of supplies. I'm not really good at that either. I always come back to sewing. So if sewing is a passion for you, then you can be my sewing buddy. <laughs> we can be sewing buddies. And so I really just am looking forward to just sharing some of my projects. And I was a little gun shy about that because I'm not perfect and I'm not super knowledgeable like a sewing teacher. But then I posted about that in a video recently and people said, go ahead and show, show your projects. And it's not about being perfect. It's about just, you know, sharing and having fun. So come back and see what I'm making next. I'd be happy to share it with you as a sewing buddy, not as a sewing teacher. <laughs> I just want to say that over and over and over, <laughs> kind of like a disclaimer. <laughs> anywho, I'm really looking forward to, anywho, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to sharing some projects with you and I'm just looking forward to doing more and kind of seeing where this leads. So that's why I sew. Now it's your turn. Please leave a comment why you sew. Why? Why do you sew? I'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can have this whole little community. Oh, I do have a Facebook group called Feral Focus. And um, you know, if you wanna come and post anything that's about sewing or fashion or glamping, if you see a video that I that inspires you to wanna to show what you made, come and post it on there. It's Feral Focus, it's a group on Facebook. And I think it's open to the public or maybe just friend me and ask me and I'll put you in there. Maybe we can have a little community of buddies and we'll all share with each other. Doesn't that sound fun? does to me. So I just thought I would share my little stories with you about why I sew. And again, hit the subscribe button, click the little bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.